everybody, welcome back to the Breath of Fire 3 walkthrough. Uh, we just parted ways with Tipo and Ri, and uh, we're heading to Mount Mernig. Uh, right, right about now is, like I said the, in the last video, is where you can get Bunyan, uh, or you can first get him as an apprentice. Uh, again, I, I didn't apprentice under him, or I didn't make him my a master because uh, I, I was building more of the, uh, the mage path. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going for a more physical based uh, main character, then by all means go ahead. Uh, but I, again, did not. A uh, couple things though to know before you really enter this place, you're going to want to have uh, uh, Migus' uh, frost spell. Uh, and uh, it's good to have Burn uh, as, uh, as uh, or for your main character as well. Uh, reason being, the the frost spell is great against these tar, the, the tar man or tar tar men, I guess, in here. Uh, it actually freezes them or paralyzes them, and so they they will not counterattack uh, for the entire fight. So. So yeah, so use that use that frost build. Or put the frost build to good use here. The you see there you, there you have he's frozen and they won't. I don't know if they'll. I don't know if they'll ever become unfrozen. I'm not sure. I guess I've been. I've never really tried. Uh, but you, can, you just you know you can pound on them for free basically. Uh, after you do that. So again, you know I would. Recommend having the frost spell as you come in here. Now that guy will actually, I believe, teach you that fact uh, that you can use. Yeah, tall man. I can tell you about different. I think I just told this guy no. Yeah, he... <laughs> he'll basically tell you about uh, the tar men, and uh, I believe the little the little nut soldiers or nut mages and stuff in here. <laughs> Uh, and those are what you're gonna want to use the flame spell on So, uh, you know if you haven't learned it from the mage goo, I would suggest spending some time and and uh, Picking up those uh, spells because they are they're quite useful in here and again, you know at two levels apprenticing under Migus, Which may or may not be you know too late or uh, a bit late uh, for you, but it definitely helps if uh, you know if, if prior to losing Re and Tipo, if you've had somebody apprentice under Migus to get the skills that he's got. But um, you know, again, if the other thing is if, it, if if it's too late for that, it's too late. It's not gonna make or break your game. Uh, you can definitely make it through this area without. It's just uh, a more of a convenience factor. Um, so I guess going back to the to the reasoning why I I built uh, mage or I went with a kind of like a mage path and apprentice thunder. Um, I guess was again for the AP gains. As you can see, my main character's got quite a bit of uh, of AP, which you know gives them a lot more uh, room to cast spells in battle and outside of battle you know and you know for healing and whatnot so uh looks like i wanted to clear out some of my inventory and just stick a couple of the yeah the shards uh, basically the stat boosting items that i got i did save the swallow eye i used the protein because those are really easy to get actually really everything is pretty easy to get in comparison to the uh Swallow eye, those are very, very rare and difficult to come by. Uh, not a whole lot of treasures here, uh, but there, there is, you know, a few. And some are hidden, like this one back here. Uh, so pick those up. I don't remember. Okay, so yeah, I have all of my have all of my uh, like I guess I did say that I wanted to have the most agility I could get and I kind of did that for most of this game um, so here, 
here. We use the burn spell on the nut mage. These are very, very evasive, so you know you will you will miss a lot on the nut troops if you just try to to hack at them with physical spells or physical. Sorry, just the attack command. Um, so I, that's why I recommend having burn, uh, as that will or should one shot all of these guys because they are weak against the the fire property. So. Uh, here I th there is one enemy skill to learn from the nut troop and that's what he just used the double blow so you'll see I I just watched him for a few a few combat rounds to try to learn it uh, I would recommend if you are trying to learn uh, and this kind of goes for uh, all of the enemy skills is to reduce the enemy uh, enemies to one there if I learn it uh, reduce the enemies to, to one just so that you're not taking a bunch of extra damage each turn uh, And in the case of the the nut troop here, I, would, I guess recommend casting a protect spell If you've got it on yourself to reduce the physical damage um, And then you know just uh, just keep watching them making sure you learn it um, Double Double blow is okay. I want to say that the damage, so you basically you get two. It's it's kind of like having two attacks in the same turn, except uh, they reduce the damage to two thirds of your normal damage. So if both of them land, you end up doing a third more damage. Uh, uh, unfortunately, though, if you if you miss one of them, or heaven forbid, you miss both. Uh, you will be, you know, hurting. You, you will not come out ahead. And unfortunately, it does cost 2 AP, so, you know, whether or not you decide it's worth it or not is up to you. Uh, I did not. I did not use it. That and, um, you know, my character is not as uh, physically based. So, again, you know, I used a lot of spells here. And uh, I will continue to do so throughout my playthrough. Of these two, you know, I wouldn't say that. I guess maybe maybe that guy is a little more dangerous dangerous than. No, actually, I think the nut mage uses flare, and I think that hits pretty hard. So I guess of the two, I would kill off the mage first. This looks. This place actually does seem to give pretty decent, uh, or have pretty decent experience gains too. So I guess if you if you feel like you're weak, you know, in any way, you could you could spend a little extra time here and level up. Uh, my main character is, as you can see, level 12. So I did a good amount, uh, I believe, on the the roof of McNeil Manor. And uh, I felt that was a good time to do it. You, you know, there was the, it was a good opportunity. You had the jolt from re-powering up the volt enemies, uh, as well as the uh, the save point there and the bed. So you know, it was easy to to rest up, and uh, obviously that didn't cost any money. So. All in all, a pretty decent place to level. Uh, looks like we're finally coming up on the summit here, and here we have Sunder. <laughs> so, I think. I mean, of the two, I would say Sunder is definitely far less intelligent than Balio. And interestingly enough, the influence skill, which typically works on very, very low intelligence targets, uh, influence actually does work on Sunder. But here, I'm not sure if he was just kind of pretending to be afraid so that he could get 
get an advantage. And see, you see he stabs you in the back there. So, again, I'm not sure if... I'm not afraid of a dead zombie. I'm not, you know, I'm just not sure. If, uh... If they were playing him out to be actually superstitious and truly afraid. Or if it was kind of just a ploy to get the, the hero to let his guard down. Either way, he did stab the stab him in the back, so And this is kinda interesting, the so the main character turns into a dragon and it looks like he absorbs that sword. So that was a little that was kinda strange, but I don't know that it has really, you know, any significance whatsoever, but it was still a little interesting. So, alright, it looks like this is where it becomes a little more obvious if it isn't already that, you know, the main character is a dragon. And, uh, and now Sunder and Balio know your secret. And being the the criminals that they are, they want to try to exploit that. So they haul you off to Windia and throw you in front of the king. For real, a real dragon. <laughs> I like Nina. Nina looks like a typical, typical child. Doesn't really, uh, doesn't seem like she's got a real. I don't know. It just looks like she's having fun and you've got, you know, two two guys that supposedly have a dragon and there's the story that the dragons tried to destroy the world, so <laughs> this part is great. So like the main character's crying in the cage. And Balio and Sunder are trying to make him change back to a dragon. So the king just <laughs> explain yourself, charlatans. So the king just kind of tweaks out and labels them as con men. So he arrests everybody. He thinks that uh, that the main character's in on it too. So I don't know. That's kind of strange to throw throw a small kid in jail too. But there he is crying again. Stop your crying, you brat. He must be crying pretty loud if, uh, or pretty loudly if Sunder can hear him in the next cell. So that chest will not be able to get for quite some time. So don't worry too much about that one. So here comes Nina. Oh, love that part. These guys are so scummy, and they completely manipulate Nina. She's, she's obviously talking to the main character, and told, they totally manipulate her into to letting her out, or letting them out. Oh, 
Da. <laughs> and you won't pick on him again, right? Poor naive Nina. <laughs> and their their laugh is just hilarious. So if it's not you know, obvious already. Bellio and Sunder are obviously quite manipulative and it really feels like, you know, they've they've really uh, outsmarted the main characters. Uh, you know, multiple times and they're obviously physically more powerful. So it, it they make they make really, really good villains. Because it just doesn't feel like there's a whole lot that you can do against them. Oh, we got here, Skilling. One thing I will say, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you will have, will have already done it. But if you want to try to to win this next battle, uh, you do have. To you have to have influence uh, already and and equipped because at this point once you're in the cell and actually at the top of actually I should say I should back up before you even enter Mount Mir Mirnig or uh, however you say that um, you actually have to have your the skills that you want already equipped or I guess for lack of a better word um, you actually have to have them already on you, and uh, that as that is, there there is no time to switch. So I did a I did kind of a crummy cut, but um, this is the cut of me actually beating them, which I had never I don't believe I had ever done prior to this. Um, and we, you know, whether that was I didn't do enough leveling or I didn't have the correct skills. Uh, but I believe, in, in, like I said, influence is probably the most important. I, I don't know. You would have to be quite a bit more leveled, I believe, than even I was here, in order to win without inf the influence uh, enemy skill equipped. Uh, there is actually, there, there isn't a way to lose this. Uh, I did it, there's three different scenarios. One scenario is you can, you can actually heal Nina on the first turn and she'll wake up and run away. Um, or you can just flat out lose to Balio and Sunder. In which case, she will tell you that while you were fighting she got away. Which, you know, obviously did not happen, but um... Uh, then there's the third, there's the third scenario where, uh, where you actually fight them, and um, once Balio or Sunder get low enough, they will, they will escape the battle. They will run away, and uh, Nina does. Act. It's funny. She'll wake up, and then you'll see it coming up here in a little bit. But she'll actually wake up and smack Sunder, and then run away, and. Uh, I think that's when Sunder says, hey, it's, we gotta go, you know. But, uh, influence on the first turn, that's probably the biggest, um, recommendation I would make. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's gonna be a lot of luck, you know, it would take a lot of misses uh, for you to come ahead on this. And, uh, Sunder has a listed agility of 10, so it would require 20 agility to get extra turns in this battle, and, uh, I had the fastest equipment that you could get, and I was still only at 14. Uh, a Swallow Eye would have brought me up to 15, 
and then um, you know I didn't look much more into the into the leveling tables and how much uh, how much more agility the hero would be getting in, in following levels but uh, I didn't feel that it was it was worth it but uh, you know again if <laughs> extra turns would would make this quite a bit easier as well but uh, I felt like this this was okay I mean in all honesty you make Sunder do all or mo the majority of the work for you anyway uh, he just <laughs> He just kicks his brother over and over while you heal up every turn, so. Uh, like I said, you know, in my opinion, influence is the biggest, the biggest deciding factor of whether or not you're going to come out ahead in this battle. Uh, there are, there are listed drops for these two, and I don't remember both of them off the top of my head, but I want to say one of these guys drops an asbestos armor. Which is okay. I would not. I would not say that it is worth um, resetting your game. You know, for if you. I mean, if you really want to try for it, by all means, go right ahead. I've never got it personally, yeah, but again, I didn't really feel that it was worth the the time investment um, to try to go for it. So there, Nina finally woke up. Max Sunder. <laughs> I don't think this is how it was supposed to work. So there you go. I think this is the last turn after that dialogue. There you go. We don't have the time for this. Here I, yeah, I was going to try to land a Gloom on Sunder. But yeah, right after... Right after Balio takes off, Sunder does too. And I'm assuming vice versa, but... Uh, you know, you can't use influence on Sunder. You can't make Balio attack Sunder because it doesn't work that way. It only works if you influence uh, Sunder into attacking Balio. So... Uh, again, you know, <laughs> I think it would have taken me quite a bit more leveling to try it. Try it the other way around and not really worth it. Uh, so here we go. This is uh, Nina's joining the party here. And there's another cut that I did. Um, so here we have, we're just going into the catacombs. You can actually go back up and rest and save back in the jail cells uh, if you need to. I don't remember if I, if I did or not, but um, here we have the tombstones. If I remember right, there are, oof, it's probably actually nine tombstones total. Uh, seven of them, I believe, uh, have these words on them that you can push. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is push the green words. Uh, and then remember, you have to, it's kind of like a memory game. You have to, uh, you have to try to remember which words were the green ones. And which ones were red for another tombstone. So, um, basically, one set is so that it's just like the path to get out. And then the other set is for uh, treasure. Um, and I believe I ran from all of these battles because I w did not want to level Nina at all. I wanted to get her under, uh, there's a master right outside this place, right outside the catacombs that I wanted to, to, uh, uh save all my leveling for. I shouldn't say all of it. I wanted to say, I, I think you have to, 
master under him for three levels to get all of the skills that he knows. Uh, but we will we will talk about that more once I get there. In this place, God, I remember the first time I came here. Uh, this this was just a nightmare. I could not figure out how to get out. Um, Nina, I will say Nina is very, very weak when she starts out, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's, it's actually kind of good. It makes you kind of feel like, you know, she feels like a, kind of like a project. And here, I didn't have anything on this playthrough. That was actually very annoying that I didn't have anything for her, so I actually equipped uh, the main character with some different armor just so that I could have something more to put on her because again she's she starts out very weak and obviously I was running from everything I think I made the mistake of not I don't think I equipped um, or I don't think I was using the the defense formation which would have which would have been nice too. It would have just been. Uh, it would have been more, uh, less incoming damage every turn. Uh, but I don't remember if I actually did that or not. I, you know, I, I don't believe I did. Uh, but there are, there are few uses in the game for the defensive formation. Uh, for me, anyway, I don't prefer that one. Uh, but this is definitely one of those times. Uh, the beginning of the game, obviously, being that, uh, you know, if you've watched any of my, uh, any of the first videos, I did the same thing. I just, I basically ran from all of the, ran from all the battles until I could get under a master, and then that's kind of when I, when I started doing my leveling. Uh, the ghouls, that guy, I think, I think I got a reprisal, and that's why I killed him. Uh, but those have a skill called Bone Dart, which... Uh, confuses your enemies which can be good uh, you know in combination with influence but I don't I don't know that I would say that it's really worth the hassle um, and you actually have to you have to drop down to that tombstone over there which I gosh I could not find that for the life of me I remember looking around here the day I did this, it just took me forever. And that stunk that I wasn't able to escape from that, because this was a... I think this ended up being a bit of extra damage that I didn't really want to take, but... I guess they aren't hitting all that hard. Um... So, yeah, so, uh, I would say, you know... If you if you really want to get the most out of the master system, I would suggest doing this. Yes, it, it again it you know just like in the beginning of the game, it can get a little tedious uh, running from every battle. But um, you know, in all honesty, this place is kind of rough, so <laughs> it's uh, it may not be a bad idea to to choose your battles anyway. Uh, some of the bigger groups can can really put the hurt on quickly. Uh, and being that Nina is so, so weak, it could be a problem. Uh, she does start out with the soul gem. Uh, I would not recommend keeping it on her. It seems like a bit of a waste uh, to, to lose it right at the beginning of the game. So there's the light bangle. Once you have touched all seven of the green words, then you come, you go to that big, that big, um tombstone and that's how you fall through the floor and get the treasure uh, and that light bangle is pretty good don't know what I was doing here uh, I think I was just switching Ugh. and I was like you know what that doesn't make sense to have that on her there we go um, you know I, I knew that I wasn't going to be doing a whole lot of physical attacks with Nina so it didn't really make sense to to leave the bad amulet on her that and I want to say that um, I believe she's got really good accuracy actually 
You know how that is. She's quite weak physically, but... Again, real good accuracy. <sighs> Excuse me. Alright, so it looks like this is... This is where we finally come back up to the uh, the treasure chest that you could see at that very beginning when we first entered the the catacombs. Yeah, that spell kind of spell kind of hurts. I guess if you had the asbestos armor, that would not hurt at all. But <laughs> again, not really worth. Last domino. I think I equipped that to Nina. Just to give her a little more added defense. I wasn't as worried about her agility. Uh, being that... Uh, I mean, I really wasn't worried about either of their agility. Because I wasn't planning on actually fighting. So extra turns wouldn't be, you know, even a... Even a worry. Looks like I decided to go for the for bone uh, to learn bone dart here. That's my guess. Um, kind of a weird, a weird choice for me. I I would have expected that I would have tried to kill off one or both of these zombies before I did anything, but I guess I did not. Uh, interestingly enough, the zombies do start out with the confused status, so they will attack each other uh, until, well, I don't know if it's like three, I want to say it's like three turns, and they will regain their sanity, which just seems, seems so silly. Uh, no, looks like I did not learn it yet. There we go. So there, I did, I did, uh, there we go. Killed off the zombies and then <coughs> learned bone dart that very turn. <laughs> Took my enemy skill and ran away. Uh, so, you know, 3 AP, uh, it does some damage and causes confusion. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure that I really tried utilizing it much at all uh, there was just so few you know I, I, I guess I can't really even think of a a scenario where I would have really tried to get much use out of it oh I mean I'm gonna I'll keep my eyes peeled as I as I keep playing um, but yeah not really not really sure that that it was really worth using. So this puzzle is, um, you have to remember the red words. So on each of the tombstones, obviously, there was a green word and there was a red word. And uh, for this final puzzle to actually get out, you have to, uh, you have to select all of the words that were in red. And uh, I think I made the mistake, <laughs> if I remember right, I made the mistake of, of doing uh, all of that, or uh, doing the, the red word puzzle first, instead of the green word puzzle. And unfortunately that means it throws you down here to the bottom of the catacombs, and there's no way to get back until much later. Uh, so if I remember right, I had to... I had to go back to my save before I started the catacombs, and I was really annoyed with that. Uh, you know, again, you can get back in into the catacombs later on in the game. 
Um, but you know, I wanted the I wanted to get the the treasure uh, on my way through the first time. So again, I uh, decided to redo it. All right, but that is about it. That's that's the end of the catacombs right there. And I don't, I miss. I, I, there was a treasure behind the the last tombstone on the left there. I hope I I hope I grabbed it. I I looked away for a second there, so I think I got it. Or I think I, you know, pretty sure I got it anyway. Uh, if I remember right, there is nothing here in the inn. I just came in to to raid raid the drawers. Kids today just can't trust them. Yeah, nothing in here. Uh, Windia has a few different treasure chests. Uh, I shouldn't say treasure chests. A few different treasures uh, that you'll want to get. There's. I'd actually recommend starting at the upper level. There's bread, I believe it is, and a couple couple spots and a moxa which was kind of hidden I had a I had kind of a problem finding it uh, but moxa is the one item that increases your willpower and unfortunately unless you really know the the, the ins and outs of the willpower in this game there it doesn't ever it's it's a stat that doesn't show up on your status screen so it's impossible to tell how much you actually have at any given time unless you were to I guess uh, unless you know each character's base willpower and uh, you know keep track of how many moxas you use on uh, on each character so uh, I uh, and anyways uh, willpower is the the stat that determines whether or not you will get back up with the guts after after hitting zero health in battle. So uh, it's d definitely a good stat to have. Um, unfortunately, there's very very few Moxa in the game. Uh, there are ways to get more, but uh, again, they are they are quite rare. Um, it just robes. I did this different, differently. Um, you know, like I said, I I actually, or like I said in uh, some of my other videos, I I redid uh, my save, and uh, I made some very very different purchase choices. Um, in order to get the fifteen weapons. Uh, for the for Delonzo to apprentice under her, uh, you have to buy a couple weapons, specifically the the claymore from here. Uh, I believe maybe the rippers as well, uh, which I you know obviously did not did not do on this particular playthrough, which what ended up being a pretty big mistake because I wasn't able to then apprentice under Delonzo like I wanted. So. You know, if I was to, to recommend anything, I would say, you know, save up save up your money. And if you were able to do any fishing and get more silver knives, uh, those are a fantastic way to get money at the very beginning of the game. I can't remember if they sell for 700 or if it was like 900. But, uh, you know, again, that's a, that's a huge chunk of cash at the beginning of the game and the claymore is 2500 so um you know if you spend spend a little extra time fishing it's definitely a, a great way to get money at the beginning i'd probably say it's the most time efficient way to actually get money uh, at the beginning of the game you know a little little fishing ends up being a lot of uh of cash 
Uh, and this is the hide and go seek game. Uh, you'll actually play this one more time when when you're an adult or when you're later on in the game. But uh, the kids are pretty easy to find. They're in, they're typically in corners uh, and out of you know out of camera sight. So you just just pan the camera. You'll find them. Uh, other than that, though, Windy End, there is not a whole lot going on. You can, you know, if you do find yourself needing more cash, you can go outside and level. Uh, you know, and, and, and just get cash that way. Maybe sell off. So you could probably get away with selling off some consumables unless you're... Unless your main character is more of a physical based, which, you know, in, in which case you may need to uh, hang on to that to, to be, you know, the, the being that those will be the way that you end up healing. So, uh, you know, again, that may not be an option for you. So after you've found the four kids, uh, you will, you'll be able to... Uh, continue the story and uh, you know again so I, I did an okay job of exploring the bottom half of Windia but I have not been to the top half yet which there are you know some I don't know if you, <laughs> if you really call them treasures the, the Moxa definitely is uh, probably the best the best item that you can get here in town But yeah, not much else, not much else to say about Windia. I guess again, you know, I would say, uh, you know, explore the area, pick up the treasures that you need. Uh, the Moxa is actually back there, yeah, right back here, and I grabbed it right away on this playthrough. But I had a heck of a time. The second time I did this, I had a heck of a time finding that again. Uh, nothing else, I believe, in this, yeah, this building, Ugh, this is such a waste of time. It's, there's so many ladders and doors and stuff, and it just doesn't lead anywhere. There's nothing up here, so save yourself some time. Grab the moxa and get back out. Uh, as far as the, the other buildings, though, in the second, second part of Windia, the upper parts, uh, I believe there's bread, there's four bread scattered uh, through the other like I said through the other buildings so uh, once you grab those though that is I believe that is it for the top half treasures and uh, I don't I don't even remember what bread does I assume it's a healing item I I didn't even bother looking at it in my inventory once I picked it up Uh, being that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, being that, uh, my character is, you know, taking the mage path, I've always had, you know, uh, quite a bit of AP to, to spend on healing, which, you know, is obviously the way I, the way I like to, to go, as opposed to the consumable, so the, you know, the bread may be more useful to other people, just, uh, not so much for me. bread and some more bread all right got a little more standing around that's right up my alley so, <laughs> up Apparently one of my favorite things to do is just randomly stand around. I think I, as I've been playing lately, I've, I've had my eye on, you know, one of the other games that I play as well. So there'll, you know, there's a lot of random times where I'll have to, 
to switch windows, you know, and play my play my other game for a couple couple minutes. So I, I've been trying to catch, you know, those particular spots and cut them, but uh, I don't catch them all. Uh, so again, you know, if uh, if you feel like, you know, if you want to try for Delonzo or if that's one of your goals, you can uh, try to get cash outside. Uh, you know, unfortunately, again, the I, I think probably the best way at the beginning of the game is to... Uh, to just uh, farm yourself up some silver knives, you know, do do some fishing and and get the cash that way. But uh, but uh, fighting the monsters around this area works too. Just uh, I feel like it's a little more time consuming. Uh, but here I did put Nina under Durandal, and this guy actually does not affect your stats in any way. So he has no positive gains. He has no negative gains. Uh, and, and, you know, frankly, his, his skills are mm, not completely worthless. I can think of, I can think of one, a, a use for at least one of his skills, but for the most part, they are not very useful skills. Uh, but, uh, that being said, they are required for uh, another one of the masters later on in the game. So, uh, if you're here, you may as well. You know, you may as well apprentice under him, take your three levels, and then move on. Which is obvious, it's actually exactly what I did. And this, this little spot down here is not useful yet. Um, later on in the game, this will, this room will become relevant. <laughs> Excuse me. don't believe there was anything else out here, no. And there's nothing in the barrels. I was, de <laughs> I was definitely looking for something. Alright, so here is obviously a path. Uh... And this is kind of interesting. So, there's a treasure back here. Or over here, I should say. There it is. And this is the ginseng. Uh, interestingly enough, that is... Uh, that was retranslated. Uh, and I don't remember if the original name was the vodka shot. Or if the original name was the ginseng. But there's a difference between, um, I believe it's the PSP version of this game. Uh, so if you, know, there, there's some guides out there where I've, I've been confused when I was looking at, uh, you know, the names, and you know, some of them said vodka shot, and I was like, well, what is this thing? So, so that is what that is. The, <laughs> the ginseng is actually the vodka shot. So. Where did the wise? And here, uh, this is where you're gonna want to go to continue the story. I I backed right back out. So there's the dialogue here, and then there's a if you walk down the road just a little bit, there's a house, and that's once you step into that, that's uh, another kind of like point of no return. So here, I just went back. I did a little leveling. I got Nina. I believe it was three levels. Uh, to get all of Durandal's skills and then I continued on with the story but I obviously I'm gonna cut out the the leveling that I did with Nina and uh, when we pick the game back up this this is where we'll be and I will I will continue on with the story uh, thanks for watching hope you liked the video like comment subscribe whatever you want to do but uh, again thank you for watching